Hello. In the last video, we talked about how to optimize the OF mass ratio for a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen rocket engine using the NASA CEA tool. And in this video, we're going to continue that also using NASA CEA as a tool along with these design equations I've copied from uh, the Sutton uh, rocket propulsion elements textbook. Um, and we're going to find some more key parameters for our rocket engine, including the individual mass flow rates for each repellent the throat diameter, and the exit diameter. So let's continue along with our example from last video where we had a chamber pressure of 1000 PSIA, and we found that the optimal OF mass ratio for this sea level uh, Hydrolox engine was about four. So we're gonna continue with that. And you can see from the video, from the last video, we talked about the three stations of a rocket engine, and here they are. This is the, the chamber, the throat, and the exit. And then there's sort of a fourth station out here for the atmospheric pressure um, or the the ambient pressure but in our case we are expanding our we're firing our rocket engine at sea level and we're perfectly expanding our exhaust gases to be to match that pressure 14.7 psia so we do not have to worry about that that uh, pressure differential because we will perfectly match the ambient pressure so let's hop back into cea and quickly go back over what we did last time Rocket type problem with 1,000 PSIA chamber pressure, liquid hydrogen as the fuel, liquid oxygen as the oxidizer, an OF of 4, which we found last time. And a pressure ratio of 68.027, just basically says 1,000 over 14.7 because we're firing it at sea level. And here we go. Here's our output file. You can see our OF is four, meaning that we're burning four kilograms of oxygen, liquid oxygen for every one kilogram of liquid hydrogen. And we are interested in this exit column because we're interested in what happens after the exhaust gases have been fully expanded through the diverging section of the nozzle. So first we wanna grab this value that we talked about last time, the ISP. And you can see here it's called effective exhaust velocity C. Um, but we also talked about how to convert between the two. You just take this value and you divide it by standard gravity, 9.8 meters per second. And that will give you your specific impulse in seconds. Then we also want C star characteristic exhaust velocity. And we want the expansion ratio. This basically just says how much larger is the area of the nozzle exit over uh, versus the area of the throat. And so the first step is to find the total mass flow rate. And we can use this handy equation here, uh, C equals F over M dot, M dot means mass flow rate or total mass flow rate in this case. So you see if we rearrange it, it'll be M dot equals F over C. So that's uh, the, the total of the thrust of the rocket engine divided by the effective exhaust velocity will give us a total mass flow rate of 1.16 kilograms per second. But then we need to split that up into the individual propellant mass flow rates. So we want, remember we want to burn uh, four kilograms of liquid oxygen for every one kilogram of liquid hydrogen to maximize our ISP. So we can start by finding the fuel mass flow rate. It's simply the total mass flow rate over one plus the OF ratio. And then our oxygen mass flow rate will be the fuel mass flow rate times the OF ratio. And you can see that these should add up to the total mass flow rate, and they do. And the ox mass flow rate should be four times the four times the hydrogen mass flow rate. And it is. So these are very important parameters moving forward with our rocket engine because these will tell us how to size our injector geometry or sort of like how to size the holes in our injector in order to get these mass flow rates through it. Um, so these are very important uh, key parameters to know moving forward. Then we want to find the throat area, which is sort of the this, this area or this diameter here. Um, and this is very important because this is where the flow is choked. It's where the flow goes sonic. And once you pass once you converge to the throat, 
you can no longer converge the you no longer get any added benefit from converging the, the, the flow anymore because the flow is sonic um that's sort of the definition of choked flow so after that point you have to uh, diverge you have to use a diverging nozzle to further accelerate the flow um and this this diameter is a key a key parameter that we need to know because if we don't if our throat diameter isn't small enough we won't achieve choked flow which is very important for to, to obtain thrust in a rocket engine so to start with we're going to use this equation here because nasa cea helpfully spits out this c star value the characteristic exhaust velocity for us and we know these other ones this is the chamber pressure and this is the total mass flow rate so we can see if we rearrange this equation we'll get c star times m dot over chamber pressure should give us the area the the area at the throat so let's do that quickly uh, it should be c star times m dot which will be the total mass flow rate, C star times the total mass flow rate over the chamber pressure. And it looks a bit small, but this is in units of meters squared. So we'll find the diameter in meters and then we'll, we'll knock it down to millimeters and it, and it will look a bit uh, nicer. So for this, we just do, you know, pi r squared. So to find the, the diameter, we'll do two times uh, I don't know what that was, 2 times square root, of uh, a over pi, so that's throat area over pi, and that should give us our throat diameter in meters, and then we multiply that by 1000 to get it in millimeters. And that looks right, 22.8 millimeters for our throat diameter. And then for the nozzle exit diameter, or rather for the nozzle exit area, we have this expansion ratio, which tells us the ratio of the areas. So we just take the throat area, multiply it by the expansion ratio, and that should give us our exhaust or our nozzle exit area basically and then we can just uh, copy these to get down to the diameter so we can see that the diameter of the nozzle exit is uh, 65.24 millimeters and that looks right <clears throat> so here we have four critical uh, design parameters figured out so we, we went in knowing these, or sort of choosing these three parameters. We chose the thrust of our rocket engine. We chose the chamber pressure. And these are sort of, you'll, you'll decide these based on your needs and based on material strength and uh, a bunch of other factors. But these are sort of the ones you choose. We, we, we found the, the, the OF ratio that maximized uh, specific impulse and we chose that. You could choose a different OF mass ratio for other reasons. Um, then, we plug those into CEA, we got these values. We combined those two things and we got, we got these, these critical parameters of uh, individual propellant mass flow rates, throat diameter, and nozzle exit diameter. And critically, this throat diameter is very important, as we said, because it needs to choke the flow. So you can, you can have a smaller throat diameter than this, but you won't get any added benefit from it um, past, past choking the flow. But if, it, if your throat diameter is uh, too large, you won't choke the flow and that, that you'll, you won't get uh, thr thrust from your rocket engine or, or not thrust that you think you will. Um, and then this is, the, this is the, the nozzle exit diameter that will perfectly expand our exhaust gases to one atmosphere at sea level. Um, and, and then as we said, there is this extra pressure thrust term that we're sort of ignoring for our case because we're expanding our exhaust gases to one atmosphere at sea level. Um, but this is uh, an important uh, thing to consider if say we were firing this exact rocket engine in vacuum or something, um, we would have to consider the, the pressure thrust term. And then in the next video, we'll show you how to go from 
these individual mass flow rates and size your injector geometry um, such that you're getting these mass flow rates through your injector holes, basically. We'll, you'll, we'll find the total um, sort of orifice area or in, in, in hole area, basically, um, for each one, and then we'll divide it up into the different holes uh, and uh, we'll, we'll show you how to size uh, the injector uh, orifices. All right, thank you.